Let's get into the topic for tonight. It is again on an old world, an old style way of finishing. A few weeks ago, do you remember this one? We finished some African mahogany to this right before your very eyes. And we did it using an old method of staining it with a chemical dye stain called potassium dichromate. It's been used for, for centuries and it was quite popular in France. And I was just reading in this cool little book. I've had this for a while. I picked it up at the advice of the owner of Wood Finishing Enterprises. I was talking to him. Uh, his name is Dale. I forget his last name, but very intelligent, very up to speed on finishes of all kinds. If you want to just have some fun looking at a website, you can look at the link in our notes. It's Wood Finishing Enterprises. They're not a sponsor or anything. I just, I just love the kind of formulas they have on their website. I don't see many places. I mean, old ways of staining wood. And this book actually goes quite deeply into uh, a lot of old ways, but it's not a hard read. It's, it's pretty simple read. Um, and a lot of color samples of old recipes that you can make yourself. And it was put together with uh, Brian Miller, listen to this, a professor of wood technology who teaches an actual course on coloring wood. The art of coloring wood removes any and all intimidation from working with chemicals and dyes <laughs> and is the perfect entry point for anyone looking to learn the art of coloring wood for dramatic effect. Now that, there's one other line here. A classic technique that's been practiced for centuries Coloring wood is a sure way to infuse wow into your woodworking efforts. <laughs> it's not, I don't really have any, any stock in this book. I just have been kind of amused by it. Uh, pretty simple read, but talking about a lot of different chemicals and what they do. So I, I just am intrigued by the whole idea that chemicals have been used for centuries as uh, reactants to color wood in an interesting and beautiful way. And one of the chapters that really caught my eye, I didn't put this together until I was looking at it just recently, is this chapter nine on ferrous sulfate and potassium dichromate. They're actually linked in this chapter. And I talked about this tonight. I want to introduce you, if you've never seen it, to ferrous sulfate, a chemical reaction stain that I myself am very new to. I've just been playing around with it uh, since someone mentioned it on the live stream. I think it was Lupe. If you were here, Lupe, will you confirm that? But um, somebody said something about that. And it was, uh, my first reaction was, oh, ferrous, iron. Okay, that usually is dark and maybe, maybe used to ebonize some wood or give you that dark black gray look. And it does do that, but I was wrong. It is, it produces some of the most rich brown, deep colors in maple in particular and other woods. But what I found interesting in this book on this, um, there was, a, I forget, I won't get into the details, but someone was studying the um, architecture of the Green and Green brothers who uh, did some of their best work out in Pasadena. The green and greens were known for these beautiful colors, colorations and aging of the woods, which would, they would build their homes. And so this curious, um, I forget his, the guy, but he went in and he took samples um, of the, the finishes and had them tested and, and it came back that it was a combination of ferrous sulfate and potassium dichromate. So they were using this concoction to create these warm colors. I did not know they were ever uh, combined, not, not all at once, they're put on in layers. What he found was that first the ferrous sulfate was applied and then the potassium dichromate. There's probably a lot more you can read. You can see some of the green and green stains here. 
really cool. I, I want to get more into this. But he also gives these recipes for mixing it up. And you can get a lot of these at Wood Finishing Enterprises, these finishes and concoctions. But I also found that you can get ferrous sulfate at Carolina. Dot com. We also have a link for that. It goes by iron nitrate or ferric nitrate, ferrous nitrate, whatever. It's uh, all the same thing. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. I know you will. But um, I want to show you what it does on curly maple because it's pretty awesome. And I, I have been watching some videos of a guy who makes and sells old style long rifles, you know, with the flint locks. And we put the uh, link to his videos, to his video channel. And he selects for like really rich curly maple. And he likes to show this, this technique. Um, but I wanted to show you because it's pretty awesome. And I'll, I want to incorporate it and try it on some furniture. But what I understand is it's not altogether predictable like many chemical reaction states in that it reacts a little differently wood to wood. Now I'm going to be doing it on maple and according to this book, maple is totally void of tann tannins. Like, uh, so I, I'm not sure what it's reacting with because it will react with this piece. Now you can wash wood with tannins and then apply these and the, it somehow enhances the relation, the reaction, but we'll give it a try. All right. So we're going to start off with just some ferric, nitrate let me put on my safety goggles so i don't splash anything in my my hard seeing eyes all right so i'm going to soak in a little on this rag and let's just for kicks put some on this veneer this is gonna this is not the best on here i did a little test earlier so look at the color it gives you kind of a black this is a very almost fiddle backy piece of veneer but it takes this stain very or this chemical reaction very differently from the solid piece i'm about to show you maybe maybe i put on too much earlier but it got super dark all right so i'm just gonna lay that on there and let it do its thing all right that's gonna React, it'll get a little darker. Maybe I put on too much. Oh, here it is, look. I put a little finish on it. Look at that, it's ridiculous, right? I'm gonna try to go a little lighter, maybe, uh, maybe we're better. All right, so check this out. This is, while that's going, I wanna show you this. This is the uh, solid piece of curly maple. I don't know, how, how well can you see that curl? Good. Okay, so let's put a little on there. Here we are, white. I, you, you know, see that? I did put on some earlier. I guess I let the cat out of the bag. The cat's chatoying eye. All right, here we go. I'm going to just start wiping some on here. And look at it, it gets this ugly gray. It starts to look a little like weathered wood. Yeah, it doesn't look so bad right now. No, no, it doesn't. This... This Ready. took more, um, but what I want to show you, hang in there. <laughs> Don't turn the channel, as we used to say, because <laughs> I got something big Don't and surprising. Click. Yeah. Um, this, what I, what I love about this is the way it reacts when you apply heat to it and it's kind of mind-boggling. I got to do more reading. Maybe some of you can help me with my studies on this. I bet there's people out there who know more about this. All right, so let's just lock this in. We'll shut that down. Let's check this out. Look at look at what happened to our piece. It did get kind of dark, didn't it? Wow. Oops. So. We'll let this get a little darker too. Let that react. All right. So while we're waiting for this to soak in and maybe enrich in and darken a bit, 
I'm gonna apply a little heat to the other one. Imagine this as a gun stock. So I did a soft little radius on this just to give it that, a bit of a gun stock effect. And let's bring over this piece. And here's the secret weapon. I'm gonna apply this with a heat gun. Watch what happens. Let's see if we can make a reaction here. What we were hoping to see is this to go to a pleasing, warm, deep brown. Tom, while you're doing that, Lee's curious, is there a way to stop the reaction if you see it going too dark? I don't know. This is all new to me, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know. Sometimes there's ways of neutralizing, ble like bleach, you neutralize with vinegar, the two-part bleach. Oh, look at what's happening. Ooh. It's almost like a marshmallow over the fire. <laughs> oh, look at that. And it's not for me, it's not for me toasting it either. I know it does seem like that, but it's actually the iron nitrate. Somehow it responds to this heat and it, you get this extra chemical reaction. So it's so what do you think? Is that? starting to look like a fine gun stock you might have seen i mean that's not bad right now this i put on earlier it's quite dark i will see if we get a darker transition here this is just still kind of wet i'm going to put some other finishes on this to enrich in it to look so that's not all we're doing would happen over time without the heat you know uh, I don't I don't think so because I've had some pieces around it just stays gray I mean this is pretty significant heat isn't that nice I mean I haven't had a marshmallow for a long time but I'm kind of <laughs> I'm kind of thinking about it Get out more. <laughs> what else do you know that browns like this yeah, it's just beautiful. with heat? You know, I guess toast. <laughs> it's kind of red, reddish. Yeah, that's pretty nice, right? I'm. I haven't gone far enough, but I want to get to the other end where it's darker to see. Like I applied more down here. So this is what will happen when you apply more to the surface. I'll stay in one area, kind of. This reminded me very much of the rifles, okay? So that old world. So Arthur confirmed that yes, ferrous nitrate also decomposes to ferric oxide in the presence of heat. Oh, awesome. And gives this warm color. So, <laughs> I was talking with the neighborhood the other day. We had our little coffee. Which, by the way, you are welcome to join if you are not part of the neighborhood. You can see how to join on the website at epicwoodworking.com. But um, I was talking to them about if I would feel brave enough to apply this kind of heat to a finished piece of furniture, you know, who knows what's going to happen. All right, that looks pretty good, huh? This is like leaving the marshmallow on a little long. 
here we've got golden brown. I'm usually shooting for this with my marshmallows. <laughs> I'm going to let that cool little. But check this out. Here's a little candle stand that uh, I've got to finish, actually. And it's, it's got pretty sweet curly on there. Look at that leg. It's, it's not glued up yet, but imagine when this is glued up, would you apply that kind of heat to it and not be concerned? Um, I don't know. It's, it's kind of, it was a lot of heat to push that to that color. So under here, we got this beautiful cleat. And then the top, of course, which is going to be about 18 inches diameter, is all glued up. But I don't know if that's going to cause any issues with the glue joints. Um, where things within it would potentially crack things, but who knows? I am, though, going to give it a shot. I, I think it would probably be advisable to, if one of our chemistry um, majors would share, if, if they know about applying the tannins to the wood, like I think it's tannic acid you can apply, does that ensure a more even coloration, like a pre treating the wood with that um, when it comes to this uh, ferric nitrate, okay? All right, so it doesn't look like great material right at the moment, but I want to show you um, a couple things. I think, you know, I could just put oil on there. Let's, let's just put oil on this one, and then I'm going to show you a little different treatment on the solid. It's one I talked about uh, a while ago. So this is just trying to get some finish on to bring out and get a sense of how rich and nice this will become. Ooh, it's not bad, huh? It's beautiful. What's, what I love is how intense it causes the, the curl to pop. That's hard to do with like, like regular dye stains don't do that. We did do a video where I copied a process that they use at PRS Guitars, where they first apply black, like an aniline dye, and then sand it all back till the black is just in those end grain curls that you're seeing. That's what that darkness is. And um, then they apply the colors. So for like a fire red, it was like black, sand it back. Orange, sand it back, red. And, and it gave this really intense, rich I color. I did put the link to that, I believe. Yeah. I, I don't, actually, I don't think you, they did sand back the orange. So it was then it was orange and red on top of sanded back black. But this is giving us the intensity of a rich, dark line without all those steps and the warmth. Isn't that sweet? It's really beautiful. What, I mean, so Mike's asking, when you say oil, what exactly is it? Oh, this is just uh, water locks. So it's a, okay. it's a tongue oil. Um, on the rifle channel there, the riflemen, <laughs> they, uh, they use linseed oil. So they're using like an old world way of doing it too. All right, so multiple coats, that would get so rich and beautiful. I think I'm pretty nice. But I think this is even better. Uh, I'm going to use a little different technique on this. I've shown you could use the oil. I just don't have time, and I think I can get a better effect in just a few minutes with this other technique that I have shown you a while ago. When I've been jammed to get a finish on something, usually around Christmas time, I um, sometimes can pull this one off where you take um, mineral oil, okay? It's inert, it, basically, it never really cures fully. But as I was reading about French polishing methods, they quite often use it as a, like a lubricant for the pad, for polishing in the French polish manner. And so it's very compatible to shellac, which is the main ingredient in French polish. I love using shellac, but I never thought of using it with mineral oil because I was always afraid mineral oil wasn't going to dry. Wasn't it cause, wouldn't it cause the shellac not to cure? But no. It does not. So this old French polisher, I remember watching a video of him, George Frank. Does anyone know George Frank? <laughs> he was an awesome guy. There was an old video of him. Uh, he was in his Florida home. He worked in, in France for his whole career, pretty much, doing interiors and homes and everything in the French polish method. 
All right, let's put on some of this. I'll finish my story about George. All right. And the first thing he did, though, when he was showing his French polish, was this. He, he, put French, he put mineral oil on the whole surface like this before he started patting on the French polish. And I was like, wait a minute. That's going to cause that not to cure, isn't it? But he was the guy. I mean, he was the French polish guy. So I, I didn't argue with George. And he was in his tank top, too. He was... <laughs> You gotta look that video up if you can. I mean, he was an older guy in a tank top. You know that look. It's hard to beat. And uh, he's sweating and he's in his garage. That's why he was so hot down in Florida. I don't know. But he was a great, great character. Um, so look at that. Huh? Yeah. Isn't that warm and beautiful? That's nice, right? Now, if you wanted your, your deeper, darker gun stock, this, I think, is more... To my liking. Ooh. I have fussed with curly maple for years in various ways looking for for methods. And, you know, I thought the PRS was the best, but I'm kind of thinking this is amazing. I, I just, the only variable here is that you can't really control it um, because it's a chemical reaction. It's not like you're laying a dye stain directly on the wood. But I have heard it's very color fast. Does anyone else, can anyone confirm this? All right, so let's just for kicks, I'll, I'll continue my little George Frankie thing. I'm going to apply a little bit of shellac on top of this, and you will see. I mean, you won't be able to hang around long enough to see if it cures, but trust me. What I like about this is if I just went with shellac directly on this curly figured material, I would get... I guess I don't need these anymore. I would get a um, not as rich of a reaction because it's shellac has, I mean, the oil soaks into the curl and brings out more of the pop. But now going on top of the oil with shellac, you'll get a richer result. So I've got a little bit of amber shellac here, so that'll warm this up even further. And I'm just going to kind of wipe it on. This is not French polishing, but look at, man, that was easy. I just, to get this darker one, it was the same as this. I just put on like two applications in case you're wondering, but wow, nothing but, really nothing but that. So isn't that cool? So, this, I'll probably be talking more about this as I learn more about it, but it's great. You can be doing something for so long and then discover a new way, and it's exciting. Who knows how we'll incorporate this. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little exploration into um, color and creative ideas using chemical reaction stains. Remember, if you like this content, please consider subscribing <laughs> and, and uh, head on over to the website at epicwoodworking.com. There's lots of courses there, over 20 different courses that are great from beginner to some advanced. And also, you can join the neighborhood and get full access to the courses with that. So, hope you'll check that out. But thanks once again for hanging out with yes. us a little bit here in the Thank shop. Thank you. On behalf of the Camille and myself, we look forward to seeing you next time.